Welcome everybody. My name's Cherie McGinnis. Um, I'm going to try to do some a lesson today. And you all please understand that I'm not a Bible scholar. I did not go to Bible school. I'm just a regular person like everybody else trying to learn. So I don't want to misguide anybody, mislead anybody, say anything wrong, which I would never do on purpose. But this is just my opinion and the Bible as far as I under, can understand it. But uh, a person or two have asked me, because a lot of people have asked this question at one time or another, maybe not to me, but to somebody. Um, when you become a Christian, where do your friends go? You know, sometimes we think we have friends. We don't have friends. We have people who are our friends for other circumstances. There are friends when everything's going good. But when we have a problem or we have an issue or we change something in our life, they disappear. And um, I've got my, um, I was reading up on this because I didn't want to mislead anybody. I've got my Quest Study Bible out. And no, it doesn't come with all these little bugs on it and frogs and stuff. That's my doings because <laughs> I like stickers, you know that. <laughs> but I looked up friendship in the Bible and you all can read on it yourself, you know, and form your own opinion. But this is the gist that I get out of it, okay? If you look in the book of Proverbs, the book of Proverbs is just cram-packed full of knowledge of anything in the world you'd want to know about, just about. Especially about being a person, being on earth, being a Christian, blah, blah, blah. In chapter 18, there's, there's a little bit of stuff in uh, chapter 18 about friendship, and there also is in chapter 17, and really throughout. But in, 17, uh, in chapter 17, verse 17, um, in this Quest Bible, it says, How can I know who my friends are? And uh, you have to be able to test their loyalty, I guess, huh? Um it says, a genuine friend loves us through the best and worst of times. In fact, a friend's true colors are revealed when we go through unusually difficult or painful circumstances. And isn't that the truth? I know when I lost my husband, I found out who my friends really were. I don't know what happened. I don't know what they expected me to do or how they expected me to act. But I know that uh, several people have asked me the same thing, that they had trouble with that. Um... You know, don't be so judgmental on people. And people love to do that. They love to judge other people. They love drama. They love, you know, just being eat up with it, you know. And I don't like that. I don't do drama. I don't like drama. It's ridiculous. And if you notice people that like drama have always, I think they're addicted to it. I think some people are addicted to turmoil and drama. They have to have, it's like they feed off of it. And uh, I don't do that. You know, come on, life's hard enough. Why dig up trouble all the time? Why can't you just be happy when you can? I mean, at least, you know. But um, I uh, I understand that, you know, people are your friend till you hit a tough spot and then they disappear. Or they're your friend till the money runs out, then they leave. What if you need money? You know, what if you hit a tough spot? Where are they? <clears throat> they're gone to the next guy with some money and some stuff to keep them happy or whatever, you know. And that's not a friend. True friends aren't like that. Um, <clears throat> it says, according to Proverbs, it's preferable to have one or two close, intimate companions than a host of superficial acquaintances. The person who maintains only surface relationships with a wide number of people may eventually face ruin or for lack of good advice when it's really needed. And you've got those friends that'll tell you what you want to hear, you know, just to keep everything going. Then you've got true friends that'll tell you what's going to hurt. You know, they don't tell you just the good stuff. They're going to tell you what you probably don't want to hear, but you need to hear. And that's who your true friends are. You know, it's hard to hear stuff like that sometimes, but uh, a true friend's going to lead you in, like, the right path, you know. Uh, a, a regular friend, um, like a... Uh, um, just a regular friend that don't really go the extra mile for you. They don't really uh, stick their neck out for you, you know. They're, they're there as a convenience. I'm trying to get this thing fixed. I feel like I'm getting the ceiling. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, they just are there for uh, whatever reason, you know. When things get, the going gets rough, the, 
you know, they're gone. <laughs> They don't stick around for anything of support or anything, and real friends should support you. They should encourage you. They should tell you the truth, no matter what. Um, I'm not saying to be rude about it or anything, but I'm just saying if you're someone's true friend, I mean, it's a two-way street. You can't just expect everybody to be your friend and then you not reciprocate back. You know, it's two two-way street there. But if you're a true friend, for instance, you need to be honest with your friend. You need to encourage your friend. You need to support your friend. You need to have fun and laugh and, you know, just be like a sister, you know. Um, and some of you might say, I've got a sister. I don't think I want to be my friend. But, you know, I mean, just be, uh, just be close with that person. Be a good friend no matter what. You know, it's not all about you. It's about the other person. But, you know, when bad things happen, I mean, they take off. And don't be so quick to judge people like I was saying. I mean, when someone loses a loved one, especially abruptly and quick, we all handle grief and everything differently. Uh, we do what we have to to get through it. Um, sometimes we don't even deal with it. Um, we just kind of skim the surface, you know, and just get through our days. And that's really not good. It's gonna catch up with you eventually. But we do what we have to, to get by. There's no right way or wrong way to, to, to go through a loss or a hardship, you know, even if you've lost your job or whatever. But I had a friend that I thought was my friend since I was a little girl. And after my husband died, all the Facebook stuff and everything, we was always back and forth, you know, having fun and everything. <laughs> Nothing. She came to the funeral and came to my home, her and her mother, they bought me a little something. Uh, after that, I don't know what, I don't know if I handled everything the way she didn't think I should or what, uh, I don't know. But, you know, some people were there for me and some people flew the coop, you know. But we all handle it different. So don't be so quick to judge somebody else for what they're going through, especially if you've never been through it. And nobody that has been would wish you to have to go through it either. Um, but friends, um, it's just like I was saying, it says true friends also wound us, and they do. And the means of they're willing to tell us the hard truth, even when it hurts. We can trust their honest feedback. But an enemy only multi uh, multiplies kisses and beware of someone who does not have the courage to confront you when you need it. And that's what we were just talking about. You know, a true friend's going to tell you, the way it is, really, at least the way they see it, or give you another way of looking at something. Maybe you're looking at something one direction, and you're really not wanting to look at the other side of the issue because that's not really what you're wanting to deal with. You know, you want to look at the good part. But they're going to show you both sides, you know. You know, that job might pay more money and everything, but you're going to have to work more hours and what about those people that you're working with maybe they're not the kind of people you need to be you know working with this job you might not make as much money but you all get along and they're good christian people and you're making an honest wage you know but this job over here those people go out and party and they drink and now you're making more money but look at the hours you'll be working and then you have to work after hours and then you have to go out with them you'll feel like you owe them you know you know Maybe you just want to see one side of the picture, but there's another side that maybe your good friend would let you know about so you can make a, a, a good decision, you know. But um, they also asked me uh, on here, you know, where do your friends go when you become a Christian? And that's a good point because um, they don't want to have that lifestyle. Whatever they're doing, and I'm not saying everybody that's not a Christian is a bad person and doing bad things. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying they have their way of living, their way of talking, their way of doing things. Um, the cliques that they're in, the friends that they have. Uh, and when you become a Christian, you quit all that. And you should, and for good reason, because it's not good for you. It's not good for anything. And God doesn't want you to live that way, and he wants what's best for us, which that is not what's best for us. And sometimes I think when you go through stuff like that, I think that your friends down deep inside are a little jealous of you because you've become a Christian. This contact lens is going to pop out on me here in a minute. <laughs> 
that I think they're a little bit jealous because you had the calling and they would see it as you had the guts to go off your own way. You didn't stay with the click. You went your own way. God called you. You're trying your best to do what God wants you to do. They're still stuck in that rut that they're in that they can't get out of because they won't. You know, it takes courage, really. I mean, and be a Christian and things because, you know, you give up, uh, you give up some stuff to do that. And uh, it's stuff that you should give up. But still, I mean, it's been a way of living, you know. Uh, you give up some people. Not that they're bad people, but they're not Christian people. And, you know, you don't want to go out and do things they do anymore. Um, you're doing better. And I think sometimes they're just jealous that you had the guts to do it, and they don't. So you're living a good life. You're making good Christian friends. You're still having fun. Christians have fun. I don't know why people think Christians are fuddy duddies and they don't have a good time. We have all kinds of fun. I mean, come on. You can laugh and have fun. You don't have to be all gloom and doom to be a Christian. I mean, you have good times. And we ought to. We got something to celebrate, you know? But I think a lot of it is they're jealous. And, you know, if they're going to be that way, they're not your true friend anyway. And, you know, good riddance to them because... You know, you can pray for them. Of course you want to pray for them, but you don't have to be a part of that. And you don't have to be snobby about it or anything like, I'm, you know, I'm not even going to talk to you anymore. You know, you can't be that way. But you just have to make your own decisions. If they're over there telling jokes that you don't need to be hearing anymore, then just casually walk away, you know. You don't have to go, okay, look, y'all have to quit talking like that because I'm a Christian now, you know. You want to bring people to God. You don't want to run people away from God. And if you start getting an attitude, then they're going to get an attitude about Christians and you in particular. And you've just got to be careful. And it's hard sometimes to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> but um, in uh, <laughs> this is funny because I just looked down here at this Bible and here's this uh, <laughs> this verse is right here looking at me. It's in Proverbs 18 and it's verse 7. It says, A fool's mouth is his undoing, and his lips are a snare to his soul. Wow. There you go, God. He showed me that one right there. As soon as I looked down there, I seen a fool's mouth, and it draw my attention to it because <laughs> I have issues. <laughs> but uh, it's the truth. You know, if you just follow this Bible, it's, it's a great book to go by, a great God. <coughs> and uh, I'm not going to start. Don't worry. <laughs> But uh, there's all kinds of things in the book of Proverbs on friendship. Uh, you can look in the back of your Bible on friendship and look up verses, get on the internet. You know, I could sit here and read you off all these verses. I mean, I can. It's Proverbs 17, 17. That's where I was just going over this from. Proverbs 18, 24, 27, 6, 27, 10, 16, 28. I mean, there's all kinds of them. James 4, 4, John 15, 13. I mean, you know, there's all kinds of, that's just some of them, but there's all kinds of verses in here that will help you. Um, this is the best guide that you can ever have. You know, this is your life guide right here, this Bible. And just read it and, you know, um, do what it says. But don't worry, if you've lost friends because you're a Christian, maybe one day they'll come around and they'll be a Christian. And then they'll see, you know, wow, you know, I really shouldn't have you know, done Cherie that way because now look, you know, now they're doing me this way. You know? <laughs> you know, now that I'm a Christian, then those people are doing me the way I did Cherie, you know. And um, maybe if you just keep praying for them, one day they'll come around and, and, and maybe they'll be a Christian too. But um, you have got to take care of number one, yourself first. And uh, pray for others and just pray that everything goes okay and that, uh, that they'll eventually come around. But that's all I had about the friendship thing. But just don't, uh, um, don't be too hard on yourself because, you know, toxic people, like I said, whether they're bad people or just people that you shouldn't be around anymore or doing those things, you know, just walk away when things are going on that you shouldn't be a part of anymore. You know, just casually walk away, find something else to do. Um, you know, if they tell jokes at work, you know, just kind of walk off a little bit, you know, have something else you have to be doing, you know. You don't have to partake in all that stuff anymore. But, uh, and you'll be okay. Just pray about it and pray for the other people. 